you get up out of a seat and you walk past people, nobody wants to smell your tail. Isn't that beautiful? It's such a beautiful view. Good morning. Today is test day. Okay, today's test day. This is what I'm wearing today. It's just this, what do you call this? Um, flannel shirt, some tights, and this shirt that goes with this tights. This is what I got on. I am, it's 5.54. Breakfast downstairs starts at six. So I'm gonna grab myself some eggs, some bacon. I just made a cup of coffee as you guys saw, and it seems pretty potent. So don't need any more of that. I'm gonna have this and I am driving again today. So maybe I'll get to stop like midway and let you guys know, cause we're gonna take the test at nine. So yeah, I, I got this, I got the test, especially the general knowledge test. The air brakes, we're gonna just say I got them all, okay? And I'm gonna come back to you guys and let you know if I passed them or not. Have a great day. All right, hello you guys. So I'm sitting in the car for lunchtime. Um, sorry about my glasses. It's, I had to sit in the car. I was sitting outside because um, it was windy. It's windy. So they're having refried beans, rice, which I'm not going to eat, and pork tacos, but I threw away the um, tortilla. So, why do we have to take all these tests and stuff so early in class? Because you are not allowed to get inside of the truck, like behind the wheel, to drive until the DPS. So, this isn't a test being administered by the school. This is a test being administered by the Department of Public Services, um, the DMV, DPS, whatever you guys call it in your state. It's a test being administered by the same place that you would get your driver's license from. A CDL is basically um, an upgraded, the highest kind of license that you can get. You know what I mean? Like commercial vehicle. It's it's just an upgraded version of the license. So this test is being administered through that office. So before we can start anything, it is a driving school. Their primary goal is to teach you to drive the truck so that you could drive for their company or another company. So that's why they start us off doing this so early. And there's a process before this, like you can't, you can't even come to this point where you take this test because on the paperwork, if you haven't passed your DOT physical, which is why they did that first, because on this paperwork that when you hold this card, when you have the CDL card, it basically says that you, they have checked all of these other things and yeah you still have to have supporting documents like you actually have to have the examination physical like i showed you guys yesterday but that's why we have to do all this so it is mildly stressful um especially like if you're a person who has text test anxiety i'm not who was that well, onion hmm. i don't usually have text anxiety um but I did today kind of because I this is literally my first of knowing this information honey I'm not a mechanic. I know nothing about radiators and wheels and wheel bearings. And girl, I don't know nothing about none of that. So let me go in here, back to class, and I will see you guys at the end of the day. Probably when I get back to the hotel room. I just feel like food in here. Yes, what? I passed all four of my tests. So I am a a CDL permit holder and we learn how to back up tomorrow. I'm going to talk to y'all when I get to the hotel. I forgot one piece of information. So on the general knowledge, there was four tests. Um, on the general knowledge test, I missed six. You can miss 10. On all the other tests, I only missed one. So yeah, that's how I did. I said I got the general knowledge test and honey, it was the one I did the worst on. Hello, you guys. So back at the hotel room, I just finished eating my dinner. Um, I passed my exams, that is so exciting. And 
I'm not gonna say I knew that I would, but I knew that I would. You guys already know how I roll. Y'all know I came here strictly on assignment to move in this direction. Not because it's the place that I want to be, but because I believe that right now this is what this is what my yes is. My yes is in this space. So I'm excited to be here and I'm excited that I passed that portion of things. So we today we got a chance to see the graduating class for this week. So they literally have a class begin every single Monday. Um some of those people fall fall out of the program through that process, but in three weeks, you go to graduation. And then after the third week, you go to orientation. I learned that today, okay? Cause it was, I didn't really get it before. I do have a syllabus, but I'm trying to just kind of go with the flow. Um, let me get my mic. All right, that should sound a little better. Yeah, I'm trying to go with the flow and not do so much digging, like just go with the flow. Like I'm really, I'm so proud of myself because I don't feel anxious or anything about what's coming next. I just feel good. I feel like, okay, it is what it is. So today, like I said, the, the people who passed today, we're officially allowed to drive with a trainer in the truck. So somebody has to be in the truck with us, but we can officially do that because according to the state of Texas, federally, honestly, we have our permit. So that is a go. Um, yeah, so tomorrow, as we walked out of the door, tomorrow he said we're gonna do backing and honey, 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 honey. I said, so you guys gonna teach us how to go backwards before we can go forward? And he said, yes. So tomorrow we're gonna learn how to back up. I guess it's, it's backing is the hardest thing because it's never really safe to back up is what I'm learning. It's never safe to back up. Yes, yes, you have to back up, but it's never the safest thing to back up. There, you will not be able to see, well, truck drivers cannot see 100% by, behind them at no point of time if you don't have somebody out there. So so backing up is never the safe, the safest thing to do. So I think that's why they take so much time of it. I think by Tuesday of next week, we're actually gonna be on the road. So I got that twisted. I thought he said backing was Tuesday, but no, he said we're gonna be backing tomorrow. So I'm a little excited, you know, a little, little nervous about that. Child, I've been in the truck, I've been in the truck twice. So my, when I was younger, my grandfather was actually a truck driver and he actually drove for the academy that I'm going to right now. Um, and then we had like a moving truck that, I don't remember if it was me or it was my mom. One of us put the wrong kind of fuel in the moving truck. It was really supposed to be diesel. One of us put gas. It probably was me, was it me? No, I think it was my mom, but I think the gas station like mislabeled something. So they end up paying for the truck to get fixed and the, the big moving truck had to be towed. Yeah. So I got in the truck that time and I was terrified at that moment. So I haven't really had bad experiences nor good experiences in trucks. And that's gonna bring me to the next thing. So I have some notes over here, of course. Um, and one of the questions I put to ask you guys and kind of to ask myself is, why do you think the industry is dominated by men? Um, and I have a few things, things are just coming to my mind. And I really think fear is the biggest one. So men tend to be a little more fearless than women. Uh, and that might not be true, like once you, once you dive in and kind of go in deep, but on the surface, they tend to be like more show offs, more, you know, uh, thrill seekers, if you will. And I am learning, it is really, a th it's a thrill job and sometimes not in a good way. It can be very dangerous. Today we were watching, um, the instructor thought that it was a good idea to show us, I'm not sure why, but he thought it was a good idea to show us accidents um, that happened in Wyoming. Um, you know, the winters there are pretty tough and there was literally a pile up. If I can find the video, I don't even know if I wanna look that up, but I might put a link for you guys in the description. If I add a link, if I decide to add a link, it'll be down in the description. Of this truck pile up that was literally, it was intense. I think it was at least 20 18 wheelers got into an accident. It was sad for me to watch. It hurt my heart. It hurt my heart because you could literally watch the trucks driving and just cry. All you hear was boom, 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 one after another. It was snowing so bad. They actually shouldn't have been out there um, because you couldn't 
see in front of you. So they shouldn't have been out there. But you know, guys, and I'm not trying to say it was all men, but guys tend to not be freaked out by stuff like that. That freaks me out, most definitely. I can say that confidently, sitting right here, in the process of getting a CL saying that a uh, accident of that caliber freaks me out. Um, but the truth is, trucks don't really stop all that easy. Did y'all know that? So the next time you're on the road and there is a big truck by you, respect the big truck, respect the weight, okay? We're talking about 80,000 pounds, okay? Respect the weight of that vehicle and respect the fact that they, they can't slow down like the us. So I think that's a part of why the fuel is dominated by men, not because it's so much hard work, but because it's very, it's work that you have to be very fearless about. I think that's it. And it's crazy that I am sitting right here in the process of receiving this and I would not describe myself as fearless. I know a lot of people would, but I don't, my husband's told me that, that I'm fearless. I don't consider myself fearless. I consider myself fearful. And I know that's not the way that God intended it to be. So with that being said, I'm really excited. That's, I think that's one of the reasons I'm so excited to go through this process. I'm excited to crush my fears. And I have been doing it since I landed here. So I said landed here like I flew. Girl, I drove. I drove. Um, what was another thing? Oh, so somebody got kicked out of the class today. I think, I think so she, she missed today. She missed today, and I think maybe the instructor she got one. She failed one of her tests, and she was basically saying like he mismarked something on her paper, and things kind of got loud. And he told her to shut up. He did. Um, but if you understand the environment in the classroom, shut up wasn't necessarily something that was like out of the ordinary. He said from the jump that he had a potty mouth, and it's for the most part, it's good fun. You know what I mean? Um, and she said, "What I'm not gonna do is shut up." And he told her to get out of the classroom. And remember I said they like to send y'all home. So I doubt that she'll get too many times to do that if she did get another chance to do that. You know what I mean? And I just think, I kind of feel bad. She's a young lady. Like when I say young, you have to be at least 21. So she's at least 21 years old, but she is on the younger side of that. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's kind of sad that especially this new generation of people, and I said that like I'm old, but I just have a different mindset as far as respecting people, respecting, I don't even want to say elders because sometimes elders be tripping, just respecting people, giving respect to people. Like this is the instructor of the classroom. It don't matter if you have an attitude problem, a mouth problem. In my opinion, you don't go back and forth with people like that like that's the type of person you get pulled over by a police officer and you tell me I ain't do nothing what you like doing all that no I get it that you might not have done anything but this is an officer and you need to just check your mouth check yourself before you get yourself in trouble I'm not the type of person if this is the person of authority at that moment of time I'm not gonna be sitting here rattling off at the mouth that's just not how I am and I really don't think a, fro a program that is 100% being paid for is the place to for your attitude to show up. You know what I mean? So that was that situation. I told y'all about the car wax. The room, it was very smelly in there, okay? And there's a lot of guys. I do have a little kid, but my kid is in my, um, excuse me, my kid is in my car. I have this little, I call it the smelly butt kit, okay? I remember telling y'all this when I was packing the stuff, like nobody wants to smell your butt, your crotch, none of that. Whatever way that you have to, whatever you have to do to contain your butt crotch smell throughout the day, you need to do that, all right? And I guess I could talk to the lady truckers because I can only speak of it, but I can assure you that it was a man up in there smelling up that room like that. Like keep your butt clean. There are these dry sprays that you can put like in your butt crack loom i know has one that has more of like a natural products dr teals i believe dr teals has like um this magnesium free deodorant you could put that on your hand on your fingers right here and align your butt crack so that things stay dry and things stay fresh in the bum and if you're not comfortable doing it like on your skin put it on your underwear Put it on your underwear. Nobody, when you get up out of a seat and you walk past people, nobody wants to smell your tail. That is disgusting. So I like the dry spray. Um, 
Vagisil has a dry spray that doesn't leave any white residue. So you can put it on the inside or outside of your clothes. I would do both. If you plan on doing a lot of sitting and sweating, nobody wants to smell that stale meat. I'm just saying, nobody wants to smell it. I don't want to smell it. So I like that Vagisil. If you're a guy, okay, whatever. Go over there and get you some of the Vagisil dry spray and use it. It's really not that big of a deal. So that was another thing that, that some people stink and we we're able to go home every day and take baths. So I don't understand why people aren't doing that. Why don't you come up with fresh clothing and a fresh behind? Men are nasty. They're nasty. Some of them are because my husband ain't nasty. Some people just they concern me with the way they take care of their hygiene. But anyway, so, yeah, that was all for today. Um, since all the stressful part as of right now because I do have to still take the actual CDL test so it will be the test that I just took um, you know just more amped up there'll be more information I'll have to take that after in three weeks I'll have to take that so we're setting aside the stress for right now and we can kind of relax so with relaxing this room let, let me show you this room don't judge me now because I ain't come here to be the housekeeping housekeeping only comes to the room if you request it and I don't, I have a lot of electronics in here. I don't want nobody stealing my stuff. I don't want to have to accuse of anybody of stealing my stuff. So I haven't called them. I'm going to call them in here on Sunday when I can watch them, like make sure nobody's walking out here with my stuff um, to clean up my room and like give me some extra towels and stuff. But for now, this is what it looks like. Oh no, I'm doing it backwards. So yeah, it's a little messy, a little messy. And then you can see back there. Let me go, let me take y'all in here to see the bathroom. I really haven't cleaned up because I was kind of like stressed out about passing those things. Look, girl, look at this bathroom. My stuff is all over the place. I know, bad. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna show you guys just be cleaning this up and we're gonna end this video and I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow. So here is my stinky butt kit in it. Like I said, here's the Vagisil. You can find this at Walmart, Walgreens. I also have the Honey Pot. This is better if you apply it straight to the skin. Remember what I told you guys about hair? It's great if you keep a little hair down there. I'm just saying. Um, these are the cleansing wipes. I don't like to use these only for you know, desperate times. But if your butt stinks, let me tell you that that is a desperate time. So I did bring my laundry bag, which is down there, and I'm just gonna put my clothes in it, of course. But the towels are not mine, they belong to the hotel. So I'm just gonna keep them on the floor for when housekeeping comes, they can come in and retrieve their towels. So the room is nice and refreshed and ready for a great night's rest. I am going to sleep in tomorrow. When I say sleep in, I'm probably going to get up at like 5.30 as opposed to 5 o'clock. Um, just because I don't have to wake up and study or anything like that. So I'm going to go work out here in a little bit. I hope you guys tune in tomorrow to see how backing goes. Because tomorrow I'm going to be learning to back up. So I definitely want to report back with that news. Um, 
And if you are thinking about getting your CDL, I just want to say go for it. I have heard so many stories, like why I'm here in this process, people coming from all different walks of life whose life has literally been whose lives have literally been changed by getting their CDL. I've heard stories from other people whose lives have been changed by getting their CDL because they make a lot of money. Like I don't know if you understand, but these companies have people coming in here every single week that they're putting up in hotels. This hotel isn't cheap and they're paying for everything. They're paying for food, they're paying for everything. So these hotels are not like, I mean, not the hotels, the companies, the, this academy especially is world renowned and it's not, they're not cheap. You know, they're not gonna be cheap with you. You're gonna get a lot out of it. Um, yeah, it's dangerous work. Um, and it's not for everyone. It's a kind of a lifestyle is what I'm seeing. But I've heard people's lives being changed. So if you're sitting at home and you just kind of sitting around, you don't know what to do. You ain't making no money. I've literally seen men be able to take care of their families and then some with a CDL license. Is that why I'm doing it? No, but I have seen it being done. And if the only reason that I'm here is to show you that it can be done without you having any knowledge, honey, I'm, I'm here for that too. I'm here for that too. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.